so we are talking about uh, the unrest that we've had here in South Africa over the last week. Six days, yeah. Yeah, which just came out of nowhere and uh, was was uh, mobilized under the pretense that it was a protest to get Jacob Zuma released from prison, which is doesn't make sense because A, the guy's a criminal, and B, why would you want a guy that's stolen money from you, really? I uh, say you, those are the people that were protesting. I mean, why would you be protesting to get that guy out of jail? But uh, I suppose it's coming out that it's, um, it's, it's there, you know, there were other motivations, political it's motivations it, around it. it there's, um, yeah, I mean, w how it was portrayed in the news earlier in the week is now suddenly starting to change from, from where I'm sitting. Right. Yeah, well, tell us, to, tell us what you other... saw and heard in the UK. Well, uh, with all the other activities in the world and COVID and all that, it hasn't really featured in the news until like Wednesday, Thursday. And it's still not a major news item for us. Um, yeah, but I'm just looking at the news today. Cyril Ramaphosa suggesting that the riots were fairly well planned and coordinated. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's a whole different ball game to a reaction to something that's happened. You know, because rioting's not new. You know, we had lot riots in London where they burnt down buildings and people got hurt. And, you know, we've had riots in the US when there was other things going on there. Rioting is not an, an uh, it's an exceptional thing, but it's not, it's not, it's not um, a complete surprise when it does happen. Okay? Yeah. There's not the mitigating factors that, that spark the, and cause fire to spread. So, but if it's coordinated, uh, yeah. for, for other reasons than what is obvious. That's a whole different news story. So you tell me, guys, what's, you're closer to the action. What, what do you see there? Or is there propaganda going on? Well, well for me, I mean, I, I, before all of this stuff happened, I, I don't really listen and watch the news on a regular basis because, you know, there's, you know, it just goes through in cycles and it just, you know, winds me up to no end. Um, so I didn't really um, pay too much attention other than the couple of things that were, I saw coming through on, on uh, Twitter and that kind of stuff. Um, my push notifications on the headlines uh, from Eyewitness News. Um, yeah, I just saw shops getting vandalized. I just saw um, some of the... KZN uh, residents fighting back or protecting themselves or protecting their things. I saw a couple of funny TikToks where one of the, um, I don't know if you saw this, but when uh, one of the shop right or checkers or whatever, what they did is they took the um, vegetable oil and they put it at the front of their shop. So when the guys try to come and raid it, they kept they they couldn't get in because they were slipping on the <coughs> they couldn't on get the to oil. the shop. They couldn't get to the shop. So I've seen some funny things. I've seen some really serious Sad things, things where guys' shops have been totally vandalized, ripped to pieces. Not only the big guys, but also the small businesses and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, it's like at a time when people don't need it because you're really reeling with the sort of lockdown the downturn in the economy because of the COVID thing and all that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't dive deep into it, but um, yeah, I just caught the headlines. Sure. 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 Uh, there seems to be a lot of propaganda going on. Right. Um, and, and sure. I think once you start the wave of, of rioting and looting, People, because of the situation of high unemployment and frustrations, it quickly fuels that fire. And there's a lot of support that happens. And there's a lot of opportunists as well. This is not a South African thing. It happens all over the world. Mm. My concern is more, hang on, was this something deliberately coordinated and planned? And then we're just waiting for an excuse to implement this kind of thing. There is no way, like in my perspective, my opinion right there's no way that hundreds and thousands of people wake up one morning and get the same idea and go to like go to the same shop and or to the same area and start basically you know coordinate so but besides that 
You know, like looting and rioting happens quite often as a form of protest or as a part of protest action, right? But the burning down and destruction of infrastructure doesn't really, like... Yeah. No. It doesn't really, no. right? So, like, what was different about this time is that there was real intent to destroy, like, and set everything on fire. And um, I think one of the rationales was to put, you know, like, you can call them ordinary people, you can call them losers, you can call them people who are participating in this in the theft, you know, under, <clears throat> under basically the fog of the, the whole thing. There was, I think there was a deliberate intention to, uh, for the security forces to open up fire and, and kill quite a few people, um, which would, you know, start even broader um, discontent throughout the entire country, you know? So I think the situation was set up. I'm glad it didn't go, you know, like all the way. It's obviously extremely sad that like many businesses, many lives were affected, lives were lost, but it could have been so much worse. Mm. I mean, what do you imagine think it's over? for the time being, yeah. Well, they they say that they've got it under control. Who knows? I mean, they've mobilized the SANDF, so whatever that means. It's a show of force just to calm things mm. down. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, you've got to restore law and order. Otherwise, mm. this just goes on and on and on. It spirals out of control. I mean, one of the good things that I'm hearing from other people is that communities are now getting together across the racial and tribal divides. They're getting together as a community to, to look after themselves. Mm. That's true. That's yeah. true. So, and that's, like you that's might great. find... I mean, the unity that comes out of this and it's not one area this is happening all over the place so you know this is the rainbow nation that was forecast many years ago yeah, yeah. look i mean i saw a couple of tweets from say let's say the previously disadvantaged community saying that listen you know even under the old government we were poor but we never resorted to theft to survive yeah. Um, okay. I mean, that's a generalization. It's one person or a couple of people that are tweeting that. But what I'm saying is, it's coming from, it's coming from that community. You know, the kind of people that are saying they don't understand why this is happening because, even when they were poor under the previous government, you know, they never re resorted to, you know, there were protests back then, but they never. Um, resulted in 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 looting like that mm. so and it's just criminality really it's not i mean if you've got a um i would put it i would put it in a different way right yeah. it's like i could understand on a pure human level right if like shops were looted and the only thing that was taken was food items right fair enough i would understand Absolutely. that i would totally understand that you know because it's like this is a lot of very poor and you know historically disadvantaged people that you know right now job opportunities are extremely scarce struggling to like just physically survive get food on the table very mm. basic needs i could understand that but it's like to the large extent the food items were taken right but to the large extent like everything was taken and that's just pure greed like you're talking about electronics and that kind of stuff. Yeah, everything See, they electronics. Might, they might, they might like, argue and say, well, they're taking electronics because they would be able to resell them and earn money. You know, like instead of taking food, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's right. I'm just saying that they could, you know, who, argue. Who, who are you going to resell? Oh, there's opportunists, right? If there's mayhem and carnage and the looting has already started, and you're going to go, go, well, hello. Yeah, six months from Christmas. Let's go shopping. <laughs> there was a there was an article that, well, not an article, but yeah, there was an article that one of the chief executive officers of some like wealth management fund got busted because he got filmed in one of the I'm not sure which shop or store it was, but he was filmed stealing. Uh, <laughs> like a stove, a bry stand, and a few other things. And the dude's number plate, and he is clearly visible in the, in the video. And people obviously, like, when they saw it, they identified him. And then 
obviously the police can trace who's the owner of that vehicle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> was this the guy trying to get the TV into the... No, no, oh, no, no, no. One. The guy tried to get a TV was relatively smart. He took the number plate of his vehicle. <laughs> I mean, I, it does. It, it's not really funny, but I always, when there's these lootings and riots that happen around the world over the years, it's always some guy that tries to steal a fridge freezer. And yeah. it's massive. It's not like a quick grab of, you know, light items that you can still yeah. be out on a mobile and get away. No, you're literally, you're moving slow on a big object. <laughs> It's cumbersome. You can't get away easily. I mean, what, what are you thinking? <laughs> but yeah. it's greed. Come on. It's like, it's greed because like you're taking actually literally more than you can carry. Exactly. Yeah. It's not cash and carry. It's fridge and carry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just fridge. Yeah. And it's not carry. Yeah. Definitely not carry. I mean, there were, there were some videos of guys where it's like super orchestrated. Four guys get into a shop, take the electronics out. Guy number five pulls up in a in a pickup. Yeah. Pile everything onto the back there. The guys, Swing. the guys had a plan, but like, yeah. <clears throat> hypothetically, those were just, those were just, um, basically people executing the action, right? Mm. I'm really interested. Who are the people who are standing behind this? Because as I said, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna get hundreds and thousands of people. Right, getting the same idea and going to the same location or in different locations, but doing exactly the same thing. You know, it's like you need some level of organization. And I mean, the, the intent was pretty clear. The intent was pretty much to destabilize the, the whole country. I'm not sure what the end game was. And that's, that's an interesting point for me. I'll be waiting to see the end game still. Uh, I'm not sure if that was it, if that was just a message in terms of, you know, don't go after certain people and uh, alternatively, there's going to be serious consequences or it was a genuine attempt to reshuffle, you know, our political landscape and undermine the whole premise of the democracy. I, I think that's had the, the, the opposite effect of what they're trying to do then. I'm assuming it's more the... Uh, the, the, the far left, far right. I can't remember which one we're doing here anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but think about I mean, it, right? Julius, I'm just thinking Julius Malema must have thought, this is great. And then well, Friday, this is now starting to backfire. <laughs> well, he did. He did. He did try to pour, pour, put some oil into the burning fire by trying to stoke, you know, tensions between different communities and different ethnicities. Yeah. He did try actively to do that and he was temporarily banned on Twitter and then they reopened his account. But yeah, he was one of the few, one of the few political, I, I think he's the only one from, let's just say outside of the ANC who tried to actually actively stoke the tension. Um, it was, there was even, there was even a comment from him saying that you know, like, if you guys send an army, we're going to send in the fighters on the streets to support these guys. And I'm like, what are you trying to do, man? How do you think this is going to end? Yeah, like, what are you trying to do? It's like, you're basically making a really bad situation even worse. Mm. You know, like, if you're not willing to be part of the solution, just take a chill pull, sit down and just have some chamomile tea, man. So uh, do you think, but do you think a guy like Julius Malema, he just um, climbs on the bandwagon of anything yeah. that's going, he Absolutely. just, he's just constantly looking for something to yeah. use as a, as yeah. a, yeah, for leverage for sure. or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Plus he's trying to like, obviously play to his audience. And, yeah. You know, um, his audience are basically people who were marginalized and disadvantaged and buy into his whole narrative, mm. you know? So that's basically, that's basically it, you know, but he, luckily he was like one of the few, the rest of the, the rest of the political force, uh, parties and forces, um, actually took a reasonable approach and tried to be like more of a part of a solution than a part of a problem. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's good though. It's good. But now, I mean, the one thing that, that, that always concerns me about these kind of things and I, I, I saw this happening on our sort of WhatsApp group in our area, in our yeah. suburbs, <clears throat> is like fake news. 
someone hearing a story and this story propagating across all the different Facebook on Facebook, uh, WhatsApp groups and whatever, photos or videos that either weren't of the current situation, had come from another country maybe in some cases, yeah. a photograph that's been photoshopped or, or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, so even, I mean, even if this thing was, I mean, if this thing was orchestrated or whatever, the people that are, that, that are uh, controlling the situation or, um, making things happen, they could have all these resources at their disposal and start sending out all this kind of stuff mm. to fuel the sort of like, because I mean, there was panic amongst residents and that kind of stuff because, you know, they heard all these stories that, you know, like, um, you know, these shops are getting closed and the guys are on their way and they're marching from here to there. Yeah, and yeah. then you're seeing all these photos and videos which might not have even been part of the yeah, actual yeah. thing that i mean yeah. so how do we going forward make sure that we don't get sucked into fake news how do we how do we verify the stuff it's very really difficult yeah. especially with some people that are doing their reface thing and posting it <laughs> yeah people want people grab onto things that they they can relate to or they think is real and they they're not looking for the detail yeah, and grabbing whatever's coming across. Social media is not going to help us on this front. Yeah, no, 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 no. But like, I mean, do you think? Do you think? Do you think like technology um, is like you know in the beginning they're using this technology to propagate this stuff and Photoshop stuff and reface stuff or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, do you think? Do you think that technology will be also the thing that helps us filter that stuff out as well? Um, I think. It's a question. I think. That content. I think. I think. It's it's gonna be more prominent, you know, in the yeah. in the future, and it's going to be a lot harder to distinguish, um, you know, fake news from the actual true story, right? And like my mo my modulus of operandi, like for example, say in this situation, right, over the last six days, is like I'm gonna just check the <clears throat> the sources that I trust. Like I trust my basically. Um, security company right i trust the official c um saps yeah um briefs although they might come late but they're still fairly factual you know um everything else that you see on social media can yeah that's quite key because they're not going to have emotion in their statements it's no, it no, is no. fact 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 whereas if you're going to get something that's broadcast as a news yeah, yeah. item it's yeah. going to have emotion in it it's going to yeah. have views and it's going to be portrayed in the way they want it to be portrayed for sensationalism or or i'm just thinking back to when there was all those and it's still ongoing that the demonstrations in in the us with around black lives matter mm -hmm. and uh, there was this incident where there was this rally and this uber driver somehow ended up in the middle of this rally and uh one of the people in the in, uh, took an ak-47 out to shoot him and he defended himself and it was a right cock up of a story, you know. But so, depending on which side you're on, the various news channels that covered this footage, because there is footage of it, they mm -hmm. edited the footage to to have more of a bearing on their positioning on the story mm. because of what that news channel is associated with, or what they want to tell as a story. They won't tell both sides. They'll tell the yeah. side that they want, and they will, they'll sensationalize it. And and that is where we are in in the in the world today. All all the news agencies are going to do that. It's very rare for somebody to have a neutral view. I don't even bother with the news agencies anymore, like because it's like it's just the same story being recycled all the time. But you don't. But what about the rest of the population? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's 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 a valid point. But it's like if you look at the news coverage, it's just the same story being recycled all the time. And it's like, it's just smoke, right? So like, I want to see where the fire is coming from. I want to know like, what is actually happening. And I have to give a, my security company, I'm sure most of the service providers were doing the same thing during this time. They gave a detailed brief, literally just a one page email about what's happening and what's being done mm. to um, contain the situation twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And that was like, <clears throat> it was great because it's like, factual this is what's happening this is what's happening in this area this is what we're doing to make sure that you know everyone's okay yeah 
you know, this is where the problems are and this is what's being done to contain those problems. Like very factual, very to the point. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent. I actually sent them an e an, uh, a message on our WhatsApp group saying, the guys, you're doing a great job in terms of comms and making sure that uh, the comms are streamlined and well-structured and there's no, there's no unnecessary fluff in terms of, oh, no, you know, this guy said this or... This okay, guy but said, you're in a fortunate position, right? Yeah. What if people don't have access to security company? Yeah, then SAPs. But SAPs There's like... There's still a distrust of the, 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 the SAPs in some parts of the country. So who do they believe? They, they can only get misinformation or fake news. Um, Like, for example, sake, our SAP station gave like a one-page PowerPoint slide on terms of what's being done although it was late it was like 24 hours late but at least it was something you know yeah in terms of like this is what we're doing um please don't do crazy stuff you know just what we need everyone to do is just take a chill pen and let us do our job mm. fair you know yeah. true yeah. So, so how, how do you stop community vigilantism? If that's a word, I'm just thinking more along down in on on the south coast, around the Greater Durban area, where communities were getting together, going, we 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 can't, we've got to protect ourselves now. What well, did you that's hear? Did you hype. hear that Cyril uh, commended these people for defending their stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but thank you. We'll take that as a as a as a plus. So what they they go and all gather together as a community? Great, that's good. Oh, hang on. We're blocking yeah. off our whole village, our town, or whatever it is, all access roads. If you're going to come our way, you're going to have to get through this barricade. Mm. Hang on. How far do we go with this? Yeah, true. True. Uh, but, I mean, I suppose, I suppose, you know, it might, let's say it wasn't the residents. Let's say it was the private security companies that were doing that. I mean, is that not what we would hope that our private security companies would do on our behalf? You're paying them. You, you, obviously, they're on your side, so you're going to support mm. that. Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, right? how do the police see that? Do they have the that? jurisdiction to do that? Well, this what is the thing. What gives them the right? Well, I mean, no, but think about it this way. You know, like we live in, you know, in South Africa where the um, armed response mm. um, often chase down uh, suspected burglars. Sus yep. suspected hijackers and whatever and yeah. apprehend uh, them <laughs> apprehend shoot i mean that was that was the case when i worked for an on response company when i was 19. What, 30 yeah 30 years 30 ago, years ago. <laughs> that was that was the status quo yeah then. no but what i'm saying is that if it was going to be an issue uh, you know from a south africa police point of view they would have already dealt with the situation and said so you're not allowed to do that you know what I mean? So, other other the you know other the, they've created a a, a situation where uh, you know these guys do have a little bit of um, what's the right word um, license to do it in a way. So I don't know. So I, I've... the government tries to <laughs> the government tries to basically streamline that that type of approach mm. through the community policing form, forums which is linked to SAPS. Yeah. So when, on the first day, when the trouble started in Hauteng, I saw the notices come up across pretty much all, um, all the CPFs, the CPF forums, basically just requesting members to get together and basically activate all the resources to, um, to contain the situation. Yeah. Um, those structures are really well developed in some areas and really not well developed in others, right? So it depends on the level of organization, on you know the type of suburb that you're staying in. But what you see, what you were seeing in case again, many, many suburbs, many suburbs that like banded together and they were showing on, on TV. Those were not like wealthy suburbs, right? Or even like middle class suburbs. Those guys might not even have access to a, you know, private security provider that's, or several private security providers that ha can help them with that. Some, like in many cases, um, 
your only line of defense is basically your neighbor and people that live down the street from you. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to like, to make Protect sure your, that, yeah. I mean, especially if you're seeing them vandalizing shops and all that kind of stuff. So you yeah. know what they're capable of doing. Yeah.